It is incredibly important to think about who tells history and whose history gets told. We're most concerned with expanding the voices of those who we hear today. One of the most important goals is to involve the entire community from the beginning of the process to the very end. That includes having the community involved in our research, excavation, and getting involved in some of our most exciting internship opportunities. Community-based archaeology at Varner Hog looks like a decision-making process that is led by the community in which archaeologists and historians and their partners enact those plans and are guided at every process by the community in which they want to see how this work comes up and is reported and is integrated into interpretation at the site. It's a blessing and a privilege and honor to be um, out here. History is very important. My great-grandfather, Robert Williams Sr., was out here. A lot of them I didn't know, I just knew my, my great-grandfather. There's a lot of history here, and history is something that's very important, and it's something that you have to take your time. We have a term that we say, uh, the rabbit hole goes deep. How deep does the rabbit hole go? And so when you start dealing with history, the rabbit hole goes deep. In 1989, I met my paternal great aunt, Willie Bell Strange, and uh, I was fascinated with her features because she reminded me of a Native American, and I even have her features as well. When I saw her, I just immediately began to interview her, asking her where she was born, where her parents were from, I was at a family history of research center looking up my ancestors. I went straight to 1870. I didn't go backwards like people normally do. Just the idea of seeing my ancestor on paper, it just, I know it sounds silly, but it, it um, and I'm trying not to tear up now, it was just something seeing his name on paper. And uh, that, that did something for me. And from there, I was, I was uh, struck by the genealogy bug and I've been doing it for 30 years now. The enslaver that owned the earliest identified ancestor that I know of is Lafayette Winston. The earliest ancestor is B Benjamin Bonner, who came to this area in 1852 when he was 10 years old. Some individuals, uh, when they think of plantation sites, they think of just the pain and suffering and the darkness, and they don't want anything to, be, to do with the sites. Many of the former enslaved individuals did not want to share stories of the pain and suffering. There is an opportunity to reclaim these spaces because they also need to know that children were born in these, these spaces, uh, hope was born in these spaces, that the future would be better. Uh, with each birth, there was a hope that this child may one day be free. And for many generations and for many individuals that didn't happen, but there was always new birth and new hope. Uh, in these spaces, individuals, while not officially married, built relationships. In the slave quarters, uh, there were separate communities uh, that were established, and there was joy even in the environment of oppression and torture and suffering so individuals have to also know that uh, they have a right to come into these spaces and they have a right to uh, their emotions and feelings about it. I'm not telling them that they must uh, just be happy about the sites, but I, I think because they've only heard one side of the negative things with the plantations, that they don't realize how much their ancestors contributed to the success of the plantation and they need to know those stories too. Ancestors uh, were people who went on to do great things. They were, uh, one of them played in, uh, in a football for the NFL. Uh, they became politicians, just a myriad of occupations. And so, again, that's resilience. You know, you don't let the institution of slavery hold you back, you move forward. And so again, just seeing all the things they did for the community, the impact they made on the community. That's really what's important. My ancestors didn't do anything great, but the fact that they survived and, uh, and there were several generations and here I am, that's enough for me. What I found in my personal experience is building my family history, it left me with a sense of pride to be able to see what they've accomplished. 
So I would ask them to interview the oldest relative in the family. Armed with that information, I would have them go to the nearest uh, genealogy center and start looking for their relatives in the census records, uh, marriage records, all vital records. From there, once you go back to 1870, you start looking for the slaveholder. And that's a, that's a big process. So that's beginning genealogy, intermediate genealogy, and then finding the last slaveholder. And it's not easy work, but you just need to be determined that you want to find your ancestors. Just on a, a personal journey of studying history, when I did not see the I in the story, in the history, I just began doing research and work to kind of find out what, what's missing. What, there had to be more to this story of these sites, Vernon Hogg, Levi Jordan, Texas, America, and even world history, uh, and even women's history. That's not enough stories of women. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that we fill in the gaps uh, to show that the people that lived in these spaces, not to forget them, to remember their contributions to the success of this site. Uh, some of that history is dark and painful but there's also positive stories that are left out of the talent, um, the creativity, uh, the ingenuity of the individuals, uh, their skills uh, that were responsible for the success financially and for the success of the operation of, of these locations. But how we tell these stories and how we present them to the public is very important because heritage is what we choose to remember and how we, we choose to interpret the events. But history is the truth of what happened. I hope that my work will help to shine light and truth to drive out darkness, ignorance, and falsehoods. I'm from Brazoria County. Um, I grew up in West Columbia. Knowing that I had descendants here, I don't really know how to explain, but um, I've been in contact with other people out here in I started coming out here praying and meditating, dialoguing with the community developers and the um, archaeologists and just having some really powerful conversations and every time I come back it's like there's being advanced and so you know all glory and honor to God and I'm just thankful to uh, be a part and be able to share you know my thoughts. There are plenty of opportunities out here for volunteers. Any involvement is just come out to the site. Talk to any one of the staff members. We will get your information down and we might even put you to work that day. We have so much, whether it's in the CRC helping with Angela Pfeiffer, our curator, curate artifacts or label or, you know, transcribe documents to just helping landscape, to helping give tours, to, I mean, really anything. We just always looking for somebody to help that cares. That's one thing I would love to see happen out here is uh, we get docents who are actually descendants of the formerly enslaved and they can give tours out here because it'll give a, a new perspective, um, a, a different experience too as well for our visitors to, to hear um, a real story of, of people who were enslaved out here. We hope that from the interviews and information that we have presented to you in this video that you have an overall better understanding of what community-based archaeology truly is and the ways in which Rice University is currently involving the local community here at Varner Hogg. The goal of the community-based archaeology program is to have advisors from the local area that can help us decide what our research questions are going to be. So we really hope that the work that is done here will be a partnership between local people and Rice University researchers and students and Texas Historical Commission staff so that we can ask the questions that will end up serving everyone in finding out more information about this place and its history. The new goals of the archaeology program at Varner Hog Plantation and at the Levi Jordan Plantation is to further work to engage community members in developing the questions of the research directions they want to see at the site. And so some of these will be helping us guide our research and understand 
what we're looking for, why we're doing it, and why it might be important to the community to reveal those answers or sort of work through um, some of the undertold stories of these sites. The discipline of archaeology has been through decades of tumultuous time periods as shifting perspectives on modern day issues truly challenged the ways in which archaeologists conduct research and recent social and political movements have really turned this notion to reading more about of anti-racist rhetoric here at Varner Hogg. Together with the community, we hope that Varner Hogg will be able to not only maintain current events and that educating the public on the enslaved individuals here at the site, but also to promote more events and create new experiences to increase the overall inclusiveness here at the site. I'm excited about everything. I'm excited about our staff. Um, I think we have a fantastic team that is ready to take the site forward. I think we have who we need to, to really um, show people what we have and show them that we care and that we want to tell these stories. And I just think that the potential is there. I, I feel like those days of not being inclusive and one-sided are over for us. I believe that this is bringing life back to the community here 